So joining us now to put today's earthquake in Malibu into perspective is world-renowned seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones. Dr. Jones, thank you so much for being oh, here today. Thanks for having me today. So can we start about talking about where this actually happened? Is, is that an active fault line? Yes. All right. Uh, of course, everywhere in Southern California was, is within a few miles of an active fault. This one today was near the Malibu Fault, which is part of the National Seismic Hazard Database. Um, may or may not have actually been on it. Often these smaller earthquakes are on some secondary feature. But yes, it's a well-known active area. We've had multiple magnitude fives in the Malibu area over the last few decades. Well, Dr. Jones, today you shared a map showing all of the earthquakes of a four-point magnitude or greater that had happened so far this year. So what do you make of this? Is this unusual? Well, I did go back and look, and it's not just number of magnitude fours, but number of sequences with at least one magnitude four. And since 1961, we average about six to eight a year, right? There have been years with only one or two. The largest before was 13 back in 1988. I know people who can remember <laughs> back then, there was a very active period where we had a damaging earthquake in LA every year. Wow. This year so far, we've had 14. Mm. So it is larger than we've seen in the last 65 years. Could be statistical fluctuation, right? The definition of a random distribution is sometimes they cluster, right? And we'll need a lot more time to see whether or not we're mm. seeing a, a permanent increase. We have had times, I mean, the last 25 years is some of the quietest time that we've had in a California history, and we can't think that that's going to be our long-term. So maybe we're just returning to the rate we had before. And returning to normalcy, so to speak. Normalcy <laughs> meaning more felt earthquakes. Right, Ooh. right. I'm kind of curious in the human aspect of when these earthquakes happen. I mean, for the most of us, they, they jump on, on social media or look online and see what's going on. But what is your life like once you feel something you know Things are going to go nuts for you personally. Yeah, and often it's not even feeling. I mean, I didn't feel this earthquake. I was in the middle of my morning exercise routine. I was moving too much to feel it, right? But I got a, a page. I get a text message for every earthquake above 2.8 in Southern California. And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rest for Dr. Jones. <laughs> well, I mean, I could choose to not do it because uh -huh. I, I'm not, no longer working for the government. I'm still associated with Caltech, and they've asked me to do it when I can. So I do get a certain amount of uh, choice on the matter, something like this, and you know that, I mean, especially 4.7 in Malibu, really mm -hmm. widely felt, there's a little bit more need to, to hear what's going on. Well, you provide us with a lot of comfort, so we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for coming in when you do this. <laughs> Let's talk about earthquake preparedness, because, you know, for the people watching at home who grew up in Southern California, mm -hmm. we've been told to either duck and cover and, or stand in the doorway. So what is the latest? What do we do? Okay, standing in the doorway has been debunked, actually, for a really long time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good if you're in a 200-year-old adobe house, then the door frame <laughs> is stronger than elsewhere, but only in that situation. Drop cover, hold on, we say. It used to be duck and cover. Um, it really is the safest things because the, a lot of the damage, well, there's two big ways that you can get injured in an earthquake. One of them is trying to run when the earthquake shaking is really strong. Mm. People get thrown to the ground. They have sprained ankles, mm. broken legs, and glass in their feet. It was a big thing we saw after Northridge. So running's a bad idea anyway. Um, but also flying objects. Right, you mentioned the, the cameras and the lights, if they got so active that some of them fell, mm -hmm. that's much more likely than your building collapsing. And getting under a sturdy table is a way of protecting yourself from flying objects. So we definitely, we teach that. I've been you know, teaching my kids when they were younger, my grandkids now. Uh, it, it is the safest thing to do, as long as you don't have to run very far to get to the table. Okay. Right. Otherwise, just drop. I remember being with you in Sacramento when you were talking to, to Congress, the state, state legislature. I know one of your pet peeves is the way we build our buildings. Yeah. Uh, just briefly, can you tell us what's the update on that and how you feel about that? Okay, so far we have not advanced the project. Mm. The problem being our current building code is life safety only. Make sure you crawl out alive. By adding 1% to the cost of construction now, we could save a huge amount of money in the long run, but we haven't chosen to do that. And so I would love to see us move forward with functional recovery, the build, building a building so you can repair it, because that's the way to protect our communities. Um, and so far, no, we haven't gotten it through, but we've got some plans for this, the coming uh, uh, fall and winter to really try and connect with legislators and see if we can get this moving again. Well, election coming up, so hopefully they're listening. I, think, I hope we, I, we'll probably need to wait till after the election <laughs> to get their attention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dr. Lucy Johnson, always a pleasure to have you. We, I, we know you've been so busy today, especially yeah. running around from place to place, so we really appreciate your time. Well, thank you yeah, for having thank, me. Thank you so much.
Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel and download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku to watch on your TV.